Welcome back to the Wrestling Roundtable, and our next topic is somewhat appropriate, being that this past week Jim Ross re-signed for another two years, oh, so yeah. we get to hear that voice for even longer. We're going to be talking about our favorite and least favorite commentators over the years, kind of the unsung heroes of wrestling, because I know when I go through 24-7 or any old tapes, and I hear these commentators from the past, these teams, these individual people, I, it's just like, it warms What's my heart. When I hear fresh air. when I hear Gorilla Monsoon and Bobby Heenan, when I hear McMahon and Ventura, yes, it's <laughs> such a different era. I can't even watch Jerry Lawler now. When I listen yeah. to his old stuff, his old oh, oh man. or when he's not on Raw, when he's like doing other stuff, interviews and stuff, he's so much more entertaining. Mm -hmm. when he's scripted. The funniest is when he's the, I was <laughs> I was watching the Jake Snake TV the other week and hearing him rip on Jake Snake being a drunk. Oh, I was cracking up. up. When he was commentating with McMahon and the two pay jokes, those were great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, when he was feeding with Bret Hart and all the singers oh, he did in a stupid That's not good really years. Yeah. And like a good heel announcer, when Bret turned heel, he was on the, the dark side, so now he was crying. The best thing when he was crying right there, I thought the whole rest of the show. That was so beautiful. He was upset the whole rest of the show. <laughs> yeah. It was beautiful. That was great. And, and now he's such a fucking cartoon yeah. that he makes me laugh maybe he's about scripted. once a year. Yeah. yeah, but has he been a heel? He's not a heel. Yeah, that's the right? problem. No, he's not a heel anymore. When I listen to him, I can, he's a puppet now. I can hear the Lawler from 93 saying what the Lawler should be saying Fucking now. Fucking commentators became shades of gray. We don't have a Ventura who would, who would talk about the Jesse the Body Award and shit all the JBL time. JBL was the closest thing. No, JBL fuck was. him. We have to accept a lesser heel like uh, like JB fucking L. Oh, he, he's mean to people, then he shoots. Screw him. He ain't no Jerry Lawler in the 90s. He ain't no Bobby Heenan and Jesse Ventura. Yeah, but he didn't give him a chance. He's the closest you're gonna get. Yeah, that's, that's all I'm saying. He didn't give him a chance. He's the closest we're gonna get. Who are your favorite commentators throughout your life as a wrestling fan? Well, I, I want to do the cliche thing with the Gordon Soli and all that, who I respect a great deal, but as a kid growing up in the 80s, it's always gonna be Gorilla Monsoon and Bobby Heenan. Unbelievably funny and on point, and people used to rip Gorilla for not knowing holes and stuff. He doesn't need to know, like Mike Tanay. They put over the, the tone. Gorilla would talk about Hogan like Hogan was the greatest oh, athlete absolutely. in the whole universe. He would. And then in why not? when it wasn't okay anymore, and they had Monsoon go on TV on one of their specials and say, well, I don't think Hogan knew a wrist block from a wristwatch. It was like betrayal. Mm -hmm. This is the guy who told me that he was the greatest athlete in the world for decades. I bought the shirts and had the action figures, and I was convinced that King Kong Bundy was evil, and, and Bobby Heenan was like the mastermind of a horrible scheme that was going to end the world. And, like destroying Pokemania. I don't like Jim Ross at all. He used to that, but he was really good back when before he lost his face. He was more interesting. <laughs> he was kind of like the straight commentator, yeah. Yeah. and it was good because like McMahon was trying to do this tweener thing where he was being edgy, but he was still being you know one two, ah, 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 you know. And, and, and Lawler was being Lawler. Yeah. yeah. Especially ripping on ECW, which I thought was funny. There was no. But I respect no. Like, the good heels are pricks through and through. Yes, they stick That's together. A bad guy. There are no exceptions. Yes. Except for Heenan with Goldberg in '98. That was an exception. I think that's what and I just said. And they make that exception for stupid things now. Well, of course. They make that exception for mid card bullshit. Right. You yeah. know? You well, can't do that. I thought Macho Man was an excellent commentator. He yeah. really yeah, made Macho Raw Man. special. I, I liked hearing his voice on Raw. They Mr. Said Perfect was good also. Mr. Perfect when he took over for Macho Man. I thought yeah. he did a good job. They said a lot of goofy things, mm -hmm. but Piper and Savage together, together with the Venom Superstars. Yeah. It was hard for me to believe. That they really liked Hulk Hogan, <laughs> even in the kayfabe. No, I know. Because I, I, like, I knew they were all faces at the same time. Like when McMahon took the chair shot from Flair, where it's like, holy shit, it's McMahon. It's like, oh my god. Yeah, nothing like and that. Then, and then, uh, also when um, Hogan had been like killed by Undertaker, and Macho Man and Piper left the announcement. Right, right. And they took the chair. And, and they from took the chair from Undertaker. Undertaker. That was great. I was like, oh my god. I always got a kick out of Vince McMahon's WWF era. Howard Cassell impression. Oh, that's I'm right. here with I, we, we eight gotta foot get tall. Props. I love this so as a commentator. Man was, was, so was a great commentator. He was. He was the voice of Rob. I was making fun of his two counts when I was like One, two. five years old. Ah! He's out. He's out. No, no, no. Do you no. think a lot of that had no. to do with that he was the man behind everything, so he knew what stories to tell in the best way? Like he knew what he was going. I think yeah, yeah, because yeah. he has a mind for the business. You know, this is his creation, his baby. As you, <laughs> you mean like That's the deep side? <laughs> exactly. 
I have to hear him tell a story. I think he was the perfect man, you know, and he has a mind for business. He's great at what he did back then. What about I think even now he could still be good. Oh, he could do it now, sure. Pretty much everybody mm -hmm. that he worked with, I always enjoyed. That's when I really, when I started watching. For the most part, none of us, and this is no offense to anybody, but besides me, had any experience listening to Gordon Soli at any point while he was still alive. He wouldn't work now, obviously. It'd be very mm -hmm. difficult. A uh, German soup exactly. play by <laughs> Kurt. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Play. However, Tony Schiavone did his job. I think he was well. Schiavone is one of the most underrated. He was no he different was. than Vince McMahon was in comics. He did the same thing. He didn't he know the names of all the holes, no. but he knew what he needed to put over. Now, he was ruined later on in the Money Night Wars when they started trying to feed him wines and they and they started making him say, It's a swerve! Yeah, and, and like even like talking about Foley with the title. Like, yeah. When he was allowed to just do whatever Tony yeah. Schiavone did, he was fun, he was energetic. Whenever they tell the commentators what to say, he gets so much shit from the internet. Because he's from he's the a, he stuff. shouldn't, because he made the NWO seem so real. Yeah. yeah. He really made the it. commentators helped. Every time they oh, showed up, he would run but away. I think the, the big problem with that was there was too many commentators. Who commentated the night Hogan's time? So. Bobby Heenan, Shivani. Dusty Rhodes. But oh, Heenan gave yeah. that away, though. What made Heenan work. ruined that. No, he did not. No, he did not. He was consistent. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on. Okay. He ended up being on the misports side. character with what he was Yes, and also. I know that that's not true because when he didn't said it, it didn't even go to my mind. That no, no sir. who tried to see? I was like, of course, he's a fucking liar. liar. You don't believe what the devil tells you. Exactly. I the guy that you know for all opinion. of your life you've been seeing save the day. You're not gonna think. He always said shit like that about Hogan, even when there wasn't a possible heel turn. Yeah. I've talked to my friends and stuff, and they said, oh, we thought Luger was gonna come running back in and turn and, and beat up Hogan. Nobody really believed that no matter what anybody said, you could have had this claim Hulk Hogan is about to turn heel on the bottom of the screen. Nobody would have believed it until he finally turned. Dude, we're talking about like 20 fucking years. Yeah. Of I don't think anybody even three in the, three different the company yeah. locker room. One stupid comment is not going to give that away. No. Now it would, in the era of everything I is obvious. Turn and we're going to turn not this and turn that. Well, we're going to have Chris. to take our break, but before we go to our break, I want to say one thing in Shivani's defense. Jim Ross gets credit for being a commentator for so long in so many different companies. Tony Shivani has been a commentator for just as long in so oh, many I different companies. Yes. Good night, America. Goldberg's Goldberg the champ. champ. All right. Famous words. Well, we're going to go to our first Wait, break, and then we'll be back to you, Big Ha ha. Welcome back to the Wrestling Roundtable. We were talking about our favorite and least favorite commentators through the years, and before we move on, what do you make of Joey Styles? What's his legacy? I think back in the old ECW, he was great. You know, I think everyone loved him. He did it by himself. That's I mean, cool. once, yeah, by himself, you know, on the pay-per-views, on all the hardcore shows and everything. Once they got to TNN, and they added uh, Cyrus or whatever. Uh, well, uh, Cyrus. everything. Joel Gertner. From that area yeah. was for it. Gertner, I'll give a pass. I'll give Joey Styles this. I was never a fan of his. I hate this smart mark internet side jokes he would make and crap like that. But <laughs> he did carry the company by himself. Uh -huh. When another man was added into the mix, it really wasn't it's too spectacular. He could have like, done it by himself. He was fun with Rude, though. I liked that. He was fun with Rude. Yeah. He was fun with yeah. And part of it was because Rude was an ex WF guy. He kind of got this vibe that stopped. was like, felt contaminated by him being there next to him. Yeah. Well, Rude had an attitude then. It was a little edgier. Some guys become. Like, Heenan obviously always was a great talker because he was a manager. But, like, Ventura was so much better as a commentator than he was as a, any sort of wrestling performer. I think Waller's going to be remembered by most fans, not just because of the attitude era, but he has, like, a great wrestling legacy. But as a commentator, he's the, our, the modern era's Ventura. Yeah, it's a set. Well, and you Look, can't say the same thing about J.D. fucking hell. If you remember when Joey Styles was first brought in to replace Jim Ross on Raw, yes. for about three weeks before they cut his balls off, yeah. it was actually really entertaining. It was. Because it was so different than the status quo we're used to for so long. But then, as soon as they attached the strings, yeah. and he started doing the boring storytelling crap, any kind of slap, any kind of headbutt is extreme. Taz, we have to get a paycheck. I think everyone can agree that what Taz has done to himself, he took his own edge away. Like, he's such a shill, it's absurd. I understand you're working for the big time, you're making the big money now, it ain't a bingo hall anymore. 
But he goes out there and he makes fun of who he used to be. You don't have to do that. Like, nobody oh, likes that. Nobody likes a person who doesn't have, like, have you know, know self confidence. I lost it. He's still he's still doing that job. Things, job where as a wrestler, where would he be yeah. right now if he wasn't doing that job? He could still be a commentator without no, going yeah. out on like twenty four seven and being like, "I'm a big fat fucking joke from Brooklyn." Fuck you! Like, oh, yeah, I mean, you, that's not that's not entertaining, funny know, or edgy. It's I know you're a big Taz fan. I was a Taz fan too. too. Maybe not to the extent that you guys were, but it still jars me when, like, on ECW this past week, Kane comes out and he'll make references like, "Oh, but I'm not there." Uh, what? yeah, it, it, that's part of the reason why I can't even watch it anymore. But why can't, why can't ECW he still anymore, be Taz and be funny and say, he could like, back oh, in the day, I would have choked him out. Exactly. Not, or anyway, it's a good thing for Kane that I'm not in the ring right now. That's more heel to yeah, say something like, oh, I'd beat him up if I wasn't in there. <laughs> <laughs> so right now you have two, like, you know, past ECW voices basically putting over this crap. I'm if they wanted to too. appeal to the smart mark crowd on that show, they would do that. Because really, I don't know who the hell they're trying to appeal to on that show. The, no, nobody. If you watch Twenty Four Seven, he liberally goes out there and rips the shit out of the old ECW. Like, why? I mean, I know they want to be so honest, why? but he's supposed to be putting over that. He's, that hosting, the he's show. hosting the you show. Know, he's supposed to be know. link between the two ECW things that are supposed to have some level they're of They're supposed to bridge the old and the new, which is not. I know there are a lot of old ECW wrestlers who would never do that. You know, who love to miss the old ECW like. Well, man, man, man. <laughs> Sad man. Well, let's talk about some of our least favorite or most overrated commentators. Who are some of us? today. I know you want to go off on this one, so go ahead. Yeah. If I can keep your interest, Mike today. Mike today. Hey, who's that other junkie? Don, Don West. West. Don West. <laughs> Both of them, I honestly have to say, ah. make me want to watch we TV got on deals. mute. These two sound like two eight-year-old girls screaming at any body slam, any highest community. Oh my god, Randy, he just did it with that body slam, I can't believe he did that. When I watch it, I feel insulted every time they talk. Well, because you know, when I hear something, the they have to repeat it back to me, but with a few words switched around. Here's the problem. Every time. Why are they talking Why? over promos? That's a big problem. Uh, did you hear Kurt Angle's for the time? I'll tell you I'll tell you, you, I'll tell you why. Tell you why. <laughs> when Mike Tanay was on Nitro, I actually enjoyed his work. Yeah. As the third string announcer, his role was to tell you facts about the Luchadors. He, yeah, he was pretty great much. with the yeah, Luchadors. Much. He was great in he that came, role. You know, told the story back up to the rest Here's, 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 here's what Ray Mysterio he gave us. He, he gave us all this information. Yeah. Here's the difference. Cool. As the lead man for TNA, he is exposition. All he's going to tell you is plot-driven dialogue. He's, he's going to tell you exactly what you're supposed plot to feel. Yeah. This, this is exactly what the story's supposed to be, and, and that's why. And, it it sounds and that's why TNA won't go any further because they're still, in their own way, no matter how people want to say, still trying to be like bro, still following in there. And the problem is having the, someone like Vince McMahon who knows kind of what he's doing feed you lines is even worse when you're having people who don't know what they're doing like the TNA bookers feed a guy like that lines. You know what I mean? I think the yeah. program would work so much better if they had Kevin Nash out there. Oh, well, Which, that's needless that's, to say. And he should be champion. Listen. Let's let's get this Kevin be, Nash thing out. Right? <laughs> Do you realize <laughs> you would, be what would good. happen to that yeah, show? Yeah. <laughs> now, granted, I would enjoy yeah. it, but if you're yeah. Dixie Carter, there's no way you can allow that to happen. You might as well get ICP to do the show. Jim Cornette, I thought, was a great announcer. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he was great. No, he was doing, no, like, no. He's a manager, not as an announcer. He's a no, he was a good like, announcer. It's too much, because he's like a Joey Styles heel. He was I know everything, and I'm going to tell you. He doesn't okay. know. He was witty. He wasn't the greatest announcer. But I would take him over anyone else right now. It's a lot seriously. better. So a lot I would take the man who sold you baseball cards at three in the morning. If he was with somebody who could tame him a little bit, he might actually be entertaining. Because no, people no, love that. Absolutely, thing. I don't, I don't see cause, it at cause, all. Yeah, but because you guys don't like him, I think because he's not has nothing to do with wrestling. He's the guy that sold the McGuire rookie cards, and now he's not just that. He's just he's just yelling at me. Did you just see that? It's always just yelling and yelling. It sounds like a parody of wrestling. Yeah. Well, Jim Ross does that too. I mean, every Monday night. Yeah, but Jim Ross. Yeah. Yeah. Did that Jeff Hardy Jim Ross at least has his legacy to fall back on. Because everything Jim Ross was is always like, I think, fuck, <laughs> They'll always have those moments with Austin, Austin, all those, you know. Yeah, those that that defining is. moments, you know. He has those big moments. That's no, how it is. I think Jim Ross, I'll say it right now, I'll get shit for it. Jim Ross is the most overrated. Oh, totally. I can't stand his name. Now he is. I'm not crazy. saying that he wasn't ever good. But I think he I'm was, tired of it. You can have anyone go out there and do their Jim Ross impression to me this I think day. he was good at a certain point. They should have just let him, you know, should just put him in the back. He's good, but 
I'm not gonna say he's the greatest of all time like they did at the. You know where he's good? He's good at the WrestleMania main event. Well, you know what? For the rest of the year, listen to him every fucking week is torturous yeah. because every week's the WrestleMania main event, and not in that Shivani type cartoon well, way. Well, speaking of WrestleMania main events, real quick, what are some of your favorite moments in? Like, announcing? Yeah. Goldberg went in the belt. Goldberg went in the belt. He took something that was a 10 and made it an 11. Mm -hmm. he, he felt it. He was feeling yeah. it legitimately. And the fans were going nuts. When he held the belts up, you know, he didn't. He wasn't talking. Whereas Mike Tanay or Jim Ross would be talking over that. There you can see the two belts. He has the world title, the well, U.S. title. I hate to talk over you, but we're running out of time. And it was a good show this week for the panel. Lawrence oh, Haber, yeah. Chris Harris, Rodney Lacan. I'm your host, Eric Santa Maria. Tune in next week. We'll be talking about our favorite submissions and finishers and also comparing mixed martial arts to wrestling. Good night, America. Wilbert's the channel.